Form 24 family, very nice to see you guys. If we haven't met yet, my name is Levi and we are currently in my garage. A couple of months ago, I made a video called Rucking for Athletes. And essentially that video was seven practical reasons why you might add rucking into your regular training routine. Um, that video has done pretty well. Um, and as I've kind of watched the traction of that video grow um, and I've gotten feedback in the comments section, I decided that today would be a good day to film part two of that video. Uh, so if that video is kind of the why you should consider rucking, this video is going to be how uh, you start integrating rucking into a normal training routine, like a traditional strength training routine. How do you take rucking? How do you take strength training? Um, and how do you combine them into the most effective training program uh, that you possibly can? Now, if you are going to need rucking for your profession, if you're heading into the military or heading into law enforcement, um, we'll talk about that in a second. But the first stuff that we're going to talk about is just kind of to us normal people, right? Um, I kind of, in my professional life, I run a gym here in Tampa. We work with professional athletes and then um, I call them lifestyle athletes. We work with lifestyle athletes. So lifestyle athletes are people that might not have like a big competitive season coming up, uh, but they train hard and they're all about that life, right? So there are lifestyle athletes and I'm going to talk to that population group first um, and then I'll circle back to, you know, maybe prospective military personnel um, at the end. All right, so if you were to come to me in my gym um, and I was going to start building a training program for you, um, and if I controlled all the variables and I controlled the universe, um, what I would try to do is create like a nice four-day training routine for you. Um, and I've got a couple graphics that I'm going to throw up on the screen. But ideally in a perfect world, if I'm working with somebody, um, we're going to train Monday, Tuesday, we're going to take Wednesday off, and then we're going to train hard again Thursday, Friday, and then take the weekend off to recover. This is just a structure um, that I've used for a very long time and it works really, really well. Um, and then kind of as like a little bonus for you watching this video right now, um, I'm going to add in even kind of how I would structure those movements. Um, so your upper pushes, your upper pulls, your lower pushes and your lower pulls. Um, this is just kind of a, a rough template on how I would structure like a really well-balanced training program for somebody. If you are watching this video, um, that means that you haven't really built rucking into your training program yet, right? So you want to start adding that in. And so what I would suggest is that you pick one of those off days. Um, and in the example that I just gave you, Saturday is a perfect example. This is how I personally train. Um, and then if I am controlling a client's programming, um, this is kind of where I default at least to start with for them. Um, so taking Saturday, I would start adding in rucking. And so essentially rucking is going to take the place of one of your recovery days, but we're going to be introducing rucking very slowly. Um, we're going to be patient with this and we're going to kind of build, uh, build up on top of this. So now let's talk about the actual like nuts and bolts on how to start rucking. I think the first thing that you need to do is that you just need to feel what a mile with 20 to 30, maybe even to 40 pounds feels like. We need to get really, really comfortable with rucking one mile. That is the first goal. Um, so I would suggest that on that Saturday or on that off day or whatever day you decide to ruck, and I would only choose one day for now. Um, again, like we'll talk about this in, in a little bit, but I would choose one day to start rucking. Um, you're rucking on the same day every week and you're only starting with a mile. Um, I would start light, start a little bit lighter than you might think. I think 20 to 25 pounds uh, for most people is great. I'm kind of a bigger dude. I'm over 200 pounds. Um, so starting with 30, 35, maybe starting with 40, um, if you're 200 pounds or so is going to be okay. But do a mile, get a time on that mile um, and just start repeating that for three or four weeks. After you get a few weeks of that one mile baseline in, you're gonna start getting a feel for your normal natural tempo. Um, you're also going to get a feel pretty quickly for how and where you're sore. Um, you know, I think when people first start rucking, obviously like their upper back um, gets a little sore. Um, and, and your feet are gonna be sore. So going even a mile uh, with 25 pounds on, uh, that's a completely different training demand that you've ever experienced before. And so, you know, the next day or the next two days, um, like the arches of your feet might be sore. Um, and this is why I want you to start slow because, 
you know, there might need to be adjustments that we make just on either the way that your pack is sitting on your back, um, or maybe you need to be adjusting like the footwear that you're using. Um, try a couple different pair of shoes. Um, try a couple different lengths of socks. Um, try like adjusting your pack. You know, it should be up high up on your scaps, um, like up on your upper back. So like really get a good feel for like what a comfortable mile feels like. Um, after you've done this three or four, maybe even five times, you're also going to start to notice like your time gets a little bit more efficient um, and that mile starts to get a little bit more comfortable and a little bit, a little bit less challenging. Um, and that's really what we're kind of trying to do immediately is just get the feel uh, for what 20 pounds on your back or 40 pounds on your back feels like for one mile. Now, after you've got a good feel for what a mile is going to feel like, before you start increasing your load, I would suggest that you start increasing your distance. Um, so start increasing your distance, that's gonna add time under tension um, into that pack. Um, and if you've done this a few times, you've kinda got your gear um, all kinda worked out, right? You know what you're comfortable in for that mile. Now start stretching that time. Hit two miles, hit three miles, maybe even push up to a five mile, uh, like a five mile ruck before you start increasing your weight. Um, and once you get you know, into that four or five mile marker, now you can kind of start restart uh, with shorter distances with a heavier pack. Personally, I'm never going to go over 50 pounds. Um, I just don't see any practical benefit to pushing over 50 pounds. Um, the heaviest and the longest ruck that I've done um, is 50 pounds for five miles. So as you start to get these different rucks under your belt at the different distances and the different loads, um, you're gonna start having these data points kind of paint a picture of where you're physically at, what you're physically capable of. Um, and then as you just continue to do this, you're gonna see that those numbers will change. You're gonna get stronger, you're gonna get in better shape, you're gonna get more efficient with your stride, um, and those times are gonna start dropping. Um, so when you first start, you know, like I said, your upper back, the musculature in your upper back and maybe like the arches of your feet and your calves uh, maybe are going to get sore. But then as you kind of build up that stamina, it's not going to be like those little, those little muscle groups that get sore anymore. It'll be your big muscle groups. So, you know, now if I go for a big ruck, I'm sore in my quads, like my quads are sore, uh, my hips are sore. Um, sometimes even like my abs are sore. So, you know, the evolution of the demand um, and the evolution of, of your carry does start to, to progress. So in a situation like we're talking about where you've got your regular weight training program happening and you've got this rucking happening simultaneously, um, you can start to tweak your workouts to improve your rucking even when you're not like on the road or on the trails with your pack on. Um, and so there's a couple different ways that you can do that. But one of the ways that I like to do that is I've got my primary or my secondary uh, movements for the day. Those are the examples that I gave you earlier. Uh, but then in my auxiliary movements, I'm adding a whole bunch of different carries into my strength training session. So, you know, all the different farmer's walk variations. Um, that's one of the reasons why I love the sandbag is that you can throw the sandbag on. You can get front carries on your sandbag. So, you know, it might be a big lower push day on the strength side. Uh, but then my auxiliary movement is uh, walking lunges with a front loaded sandbag. Um, or something similar to that, right? So I'm, I'm still carrying load on my person, on my body. I'm still getting my frame used to having weight um, on my body, but I'm not actually out on the road uh, with my pack on hitting like a time trial or something on the ruck. Um, so I, I'm smart about how I design my strength training uh, to then support my ruck, and then my ruck just kind of tops off the, the training week uh, with that big day on Saturday um, and then full recovery day on Sunday. And then I did want to make this point here at the end. If you are rucking for a specific reason, if you have a big hike coming up that you want to be training for, um, or like I mentioned before, if you are training for a career in the military, then I would suggest you start using rucking as a warm up for your lifts. So if you even think about just a recreational hiking trip, um, you're gonna be hiking into your campsite, uh, but then once you get to your campsite, then you still have a whole lot of work to do, right? You still gotta set up camp. It's not like you finish your ruck, your hike in, um, and then you've got like a nice air conditioned couch to just go relax in. Um, so if you ruck and then train, um, it's going to kind of start building your body up for like the ruck is just the transport to get where you're getting. 
Um, and you know, if you are looking into a career in the military and you need to start building up your base, that's going to be very, very relevant for you. Um, if rucking is going to be part of your job, um, I highly suggest you start looking at building the elite. So I started following the guys over at building the elite, uh, like a little, like a year and a half ago, maybe. Um, and they have been a huge resource for me. Um, they have a very good article that you can kind of check out just as like an intro to their work. Uh, but they've got an excellent blog. Um, and then they have an entire book, um, on how to prepare for like special forces selection. And they've got a whole rucking section in that book that I've gotten a ton of value from. Um, also recently there was a book called the comfort crisis that I read. Um, and that book by Michael Easter also covers rucking quite a bit. So I'll link those below if you guys are interested in checking those out and like really deep diving on rucking. Uh, but this video is just kind of like a, a little bit of a peek on like how to start adding this in in a very practical and realistic way. Um, I still think like the meat of your training program should be on the weights, um, should be on your resistance training, getting stronger, uh, but then capping off your training week with a ruck uh, that slowly progresses over time, first with distance and then with load. Um, I've gotten a ton of success for myself out of that and also the clients that I've been working with uh, here in the gym in Tampa, Florida. That's gonna wrap up today's video. Hopefully you guys got something from that. Hopefully that answered some of the questions. Um, again, part one is maybe why you should start rucking. Um, and then this part two is how you should start rucking um, and just building a more well-rounded, strong, functional human frame. Um, that's, what, that's what it's all about, right? Increase your athletic performance, increase your longevity. Um, training and rucking, I think, do a great job of accomplishing that goal. As always, guys, I appreciate all of your feedback. This video came from feedback from that previous video, so any feedback um, or any comments that you guys have, I always appreciate that. In the meantime, train hard, live full, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.